my name's Paul. Um, <laughs> I run um, the gay nights at the Victoria Pub in Walthamstow. Um, I currently live in Walthamstow as well. I um, have done for the last 12 years, 11, 12 years on and off. Um, but now settled in Walthamstow and running the Victoria Gay Nights and Gaelic, um, which is a club night in Walthamstow as well. Um, my name's Paul as well. It's not my surname, by the way. Um, <laughs> I'm 50. I work on Victoria every two weeks on the gay night. Um, I've lived here for probably about 20 years. Um, Forest Gate beforehand, Wanstead, and then Essex is where I'm originally from. But uh, couldn't wait to get away. <laughs> Why? Oh, very boring. People always seem to know everybody else's business. It's different, it's different in London. You know. I don't know. As long as you can get away with murder. To Quite interesting you're telling us how you got into the working at the bar. Oh yeah, well, my mum and dad, we had a caravan on the coast years ago, <clears throat> my dad had a boat, and there was a, like a boat club, bar and dance floor and what have you, and they had, that was open <clears throat> every weekend, and I started working there when I was about 15, illegally, and uh, just for money, <laughs> well obviously, and uh, I started when I started work, I started doing part-time bar work, gay club. Do you remember back, um, oh, Romford Road? Oh, gosh. Pigeons. Pigeons, yeah. yeah. Worked there for eight years. That was a riot. Do you remember Eddie? There was a very slender black guy. Really lovely, partially um, deaf. But at the end of every night, he would get on the, in the middle of the empty dance floor and mime to the show is over in the style of Diana Ross oh, and yes. would be pelted with empty plates, beer cans and everything because of the licence, you had to have a meal when it, with your ticket at that time, you don't, it's not there anymore anyway. But he, he, he stood up there and he loved it every week. <laughs> that was on a Sunday, wasn't it? When um, you had to have, when you had to, for them to sell alcohol after 10.30 on a Sunday. Oh. <clears throat> It you was, had to have a meal, wasn't it? Yeah. Like chicken and chips or burger and chips, things like that. Yeah, it was because it was a late night as well. We used to love going to the Camden Camden Market and then the Black Cat for the Drag Acts on Sunday. And in the old days when the pub shut at three, there was a pub called the Laurel Tree, which was known by all of us as the Laughing Laurel, which was all blacked out. You piled in upstairs disco and you just got drunker and drunker and drunk. <laughs> With all your mates, it was marvellous. <laughs> and why did you get into the club business? Um, basically because there wasn't, well there was no scene um, in Walthamstow, no gay scene in Walthamstow. Um, and I initially started the club because um, two friends of mine knew the owner of the club and they were initially asked to run it um, but they didn't have really that much interest they just wanted to go and, and get drunk and, and not really do anything and I seemed to be running around for them like showing people around the club because it's on three floors and everything um, and then when the Victoria started um, a friend of mine who was doing it um, he was going away for a year um, on tour and he asked me would I would I help them out and I very kindly said yes and it's it's just gone from strength to strength now um, it was initially a once <coughs> a month thing um, it's now twice a month the second and last Saturday of the month and we now also do a cabaret night um, with Lady Imelda and CJ um, which is Glam Jam um, they brought Glam Jam to Walthamstow and um, that's on the first Saturday of the month but that's not strictly a gay night however on the first one that we had um, the good proportion of the audience were gay um, so that's why I got into it and 
now I can't see myself getting out. <laughs> um, it's quite rare that I've actually had a whole weekend off. <laughs> um, well, you can't really, can you, when you no. work Friday and Saturday? Yeah. So it's quite nice to actually have have one weekend out of the year, because that's what it will be, <laughs> out of the year where I don't actually do anything. So, But I, I thoroughly love it. But you have a job in the week as well? Oh, yeah, I work, I work full-time as well. I, so I have a day job. Um, I'm a market market research. Um, I'm a trainer and recruitment manager for a market research company, as well as doing interviews as well. So, so how long have you been in the club business? Um, only just over a year. Um, both venues had their year anniversary um, in the last few weeks. Um, they were both launched um, end of August, beginning of September. And you say there wasn't a gay scene here? No, there, there hasn't been a gay scene or a gay, gay venue in um, Walthamstow since East Burntdown, or Central Station, as yeah. most people remember it, or even the Artful. Yeah. <coughs> so, and that burnt down three years ago, so... I thought it was longer than that. No, well, it's yeah. be four years in January. Cool. So. Yeah. Did you work at any of those? No, no, I used to go there. There used to be uh, another club in Leightonstone on road called Dirty Nellies, which was owned by women. Um, and that's where a lot of the girls used to go, but it was mixed. Um, really good fun, but a lot of it closed down. And, and then, as Paul said, when the pub burnt down, there was nothing. Nowhere, really. But you're a trained pub manager. Yeah, I am qualified, but uh, as, as I've got older... Um, I'm just not fit enough to keep doing it. I'm, I'm epileptic and I started having fits behind the bar and it's just, uh, it's not a good idea really. <laughs> Is that why you've got all these piercings? No, no, it's, uh, I got the first one I think when I was about 17, it's just habit for me. Um, I've got 12, 12 on my face and both my nipples, but then that's as far south as it goes. <laughs> um, I do. Uh, it is funny. I do get stopped sometimes by people in the street, and they, they say how much they like it. Like, Did it hurt? As though I'd somebody just strapped me in a chair and done it all in one go. And uh, I said, no, it didn't actually. But the only one that really hurt was the nose. That <laughs> really it did. I'm very sore. You've got a different image, haven't you? Pardon? Your image is completely different. Yes. Um... Wholesome, wholesome, <laughs> um, wholesome, but not pure, most probably. Um, you know, I well, I've I've n never had the desire to have piercings or anything. I I have three tattoos, and that is it. Um, I don't think my nipples could stand up to <laughs> stand up to the pain. To be honest with you, doesn't it hurt. It would mind because they're very, very tiny, so you'd have to find the nipple first of all to <laughs> and most probably go through somewhere else. Uh, keep your clothes on, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so, have you ever had any um, abuse or discrimination? Me personally, no, not really. Not that I can think of. You've been you at school? Um, no, because I, I, I was very straight at school. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I, I was married at a young age with children and then decided that I wanted to be gay, um, but not much later in life. So I've been gay over half of my life, totally gay. Um, I'm now 45, so... And previously, you were not gay at all? Um, well, it was like the young, young boy um, experience, but that was, that was about it. You were um, in denial. Yeah, I, I was, but I, I have a gay brother, so um, who's younger, so he kind of took took the pressure off really. Um, but he did, he did suffer, and was thrown out by my father. So on his sixteenth birthday, purely because he was gay. So, Is your father reconciled with him? Um, no, no. Um, my brother lives in Portugal. And has done for over twenty years. So, so this, how did your father take you? Your um, he just thought that it would be a phase. I'd soon get back with my wife, but I didn't. So, 
The rest of my family were fine, it was just my father. And your wife is fine about it? Um, she wasn't at the time. Um, <laughs> but sort of like, we're starting to have a relationship again, sort of like where we talk through Facebook, and that's about it. Um, were you married? No, I knew from about eight or nine that which side of the bread was buttered, as it were. And uh, I didn't have any trouble at being gay. I didn't get any trouble at school. Um, I went, when I went to grammar school, um, my PE teacher was a very fit... I found out subsequently, only a few years older than me, um, a very attractive bloke who used to take the piss out of me occasionally. But I got my own back couple of decades later I rang up my grand school and asked his name was Eddie Bow and I said uh, is he still at the school and he said oh yeah this guy was on asked and he said uh, he's now the deputy headmaster I said all oh, right I said but uh, well, can you tell him this is Paul Hopkins I'm just ringing to tell him that he was a bastard to me while I was at school but I was in love with him <laughs> <laughs> and hung up <laughs> <laughs> So I really have no idea what he looks like now. He used to bite his nails, I remember, when he used to be very good on the trampoline. So if he hasn't bit, if he's, if he's not stopped biting his nails, he's probably gone down to his wrists by now, I should. But, um, so did yeah. you continue any physical exercise? <laughs> not at that point, no, no. No, not in any form, actually. No. I came out when I was about 17 or 18, I think, because I was going up probably 18 because I was going up to the West End and it was about the time the sort of punk and new romantic were sort of mixing together and typically I was overdressed I mean I don't know where some people get it from um, and my dad had a go at me he said I, I don't want to have to come up to, up to town and pick you up after you've been stabbed while going up there with all your gay friends and I just turned around and said well I'm gay and it was like shocked silence between my mum and dad and me, you know. And, uh, and then my sister came in. I can't remember if she'd been at friends or something. And my mum said, your brother's got something to tell you. And I said, I'm gay. And my sister Jennifer said, oh, I know. And um, mum said, you're not shocked? I said, not really. And uh, two weeks later, within the space of two weeks, no time at all, mum and dad, very supportive, loved me. Well, and they just put up with it. I felt guilty because I was adopted and I felt I wasn't going to be passing on my father's name, even though I wasn't really going to be, you know. But uh, that was about it, really. But the lovely people, very funny. <laughs> so Waltham still doesn't have a gay thing. Oh, well, I had, didn't have one for some time. What about the rest of East London? There's Stratford, isn't there? There was two two pubs in Stratford, but I think it's only there's only one there, the Angel. Um, but that's more for children, I think. Well, <laughs> that's what it seems like. Yeah, um, I went really there youngsters. You a make you months feel ago. ancient. Yeah, I went there a couple of months ago, and it was like being at kindergarten. You actually thought that you were in the school because they looked as though they were still at school. Um, and. And apart from the White Swan, but that's that's always a, a bind to get to. It's Limehouse, isn't it? Yeah. Right out the way. It's hard, it's hard to get to unless you pay a cab. So, which is the good thing about the scene now in Walthamstow. People are coming, and it's new people coming all the time. And some mm -hmm. of them, quite a lot of them are old faces for, that used to come to Central and, and East, where they now, they've heard about it. And rather than going out in the West End, having to get night buses or cabs back. They, they feel comfortable that they can come up to the Victoria, um, have, a, have a laugh, have a drink, watch a decent cabaret, and um, then total off home, whether they walk home or it's a £4.50 cab ride. Hell of a lot easier than a two-hour night bus trip. Yeah. God, yeah. So it's